what is going on guys it is big mike here we are back today once again with another vlog finally i know it's been a hot minute because i was at school i just wrapped up the third quarter so we're pretty much done with my first year of college i still have a final today and a final tomorrow and a little bit more work to submit but we're re getting really 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 close and you guys know what that means more vlogs more streaming more content all of that stuff so i have so many plans for my car this summer so many plans for the vlogs and pretty much everything so i gotta fill you guys in right now so within the next week or two i have a bunch of things planned so i have a few things that i already bought that i just need to install for example we have the oil change which i'm going to be doing today i'm going to teach you guys how to do an oil change super super simple but that should be a fun video i also have my mach 1 chin spoiler which i need to put onto my car so i'm going to be installing that within the next few days i also have my aftermarket intake which i need to install again because i passed smog so now i can put back in my illegal intake and that's another video i'm thinking about doing a video where i take off my stock spoiler i want to see what it looks like and i'm gonna put out a poll see what you guys think about it and i don't expect it to look too good but in the future i have plans of getting a cobra spoiler which is a little ducktail spoiler that goes on the back i think it looks amazing it's about 350 dollars or so painted so not too bad but i'll be getting that probably later in the summer the last plan i have for the next few weeks is a diy rear seat delete and moving my subwoofer so right now my subwoofer is in the trunk it's facing up and it has pretty much no room to breathe and that's not good for it that means that i'm not getting the sound i want from it so i'm gonna try to remove the rear seats me and my dad are gonna build something with wood probably and then we're gonna bolt in the subwoofer where the rear seats used to be so that means we're gonna have some weight reduction with the rear seats also my car is gonna look sick and i'm gonna get much better sound with the subwoofer and trunk space so that's pretty good so i already told you guys i'm gonna be doing car mods for the next few weeks i'm gonna be streaming i'm gonna be working doing lifeguarding and swim lessons i'm gonna be hanging out with my girlfriend but what else am i gonna be doing well that's where june 25th comes into play june 25th i'm gonna be driving up to vegas in my mustang to go to ZWC3. ZWC is Zombies World Championships. It's an event for zombies, which you guys might know already. I'm not gonna be participating in the event, but I'm going, I wanna meet a bunch of people from the zombies community, make some friends, just have a good time. So I'm super, super excited about that. You guys should expect a lot of vlog content within those days. I'm gonna be there Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, and each day we're probably gonna do something new. Saturday, I'm actually gonna be at ZWC, so that should be really interesting, but I'm gonna try to find as much content as I possibly can for you guys. I'm gonna keep the vlogs rolling in, and it should be a pretty fun time. Later on in the summer, I'm gonna have a couple big mods coming in. We're gonna do headlights first. They're gonna be black housing with a clear lens, so it's gonna have a more sleek look than stock, but it's still gonna be easy to see at night, which is cool. I'm also gonna be getting coilovers, which help me lower my car a lot more. And it's also gonna help my car handle better. And then lastly, I'm probably going to get long tube headers and a catted H pipe. For you guys that don't know, um, my car has an exhaust and the exhaust makes the shit flow. It makes the flow. It makes it sound good, it makes it have more power and if i get these long tube headers and this h pipe i'm gonna have more exhaust flow and my car is gonna sound better so i'm gonna gain horsepower and i'm gonna have more fun times that's enough updates for now let's go get into that oil change there are a couple things you're gonna need before you start the oil change most importantly you're gonna need your oil you can find out exactly what kind of oil you need in your owner's manual or you can look it up online and it'll also tell you how much oil you need for this case with my Mustang, I needed 5W20 oil and I needed six quarts. So I got a five quart one and a one quart one. So that's six together. And I decided to get full synthetic oil because that's usually better for your car and it'll last longer. The second thing I got is an oil filter. You can find out exactly what oil filter you need in your owner's manual or by looking it online once again. Then just look up whatever code they give you. Like this one is FL820S and you can find one for about five to ten dollars it's super cheap 
I have an oil filter wrench. This isn't always necessary. Sometimes you can hand tighten and hand loosen the oil filter, but it's always nice to have one of these. And lastly, I have a ratchet, a breaker bar, and a socket. So your car, to get off the plug for the oil, you need to use a ratchet and a socket to loosen that and then drain out the oil. I have the breaker bar just in case it's really hard to get off and I need to have more leverage. Another thing you need is a pan for the oil. Obviously, you're gonna have to drain out the oil while you're doing the oil change and you can't just let it go on the floor. So you're gonna need to put it here so you can dispose of it after. The last thing I'm gonna need is a jack and jack stands. These are gonna help me jack the car up, give me space under, and then the jack stands will be used to hold the car up and keep it from falling. Make sure to put a piece of wood or something behind your rear tires so your car doesn't roll back. If you have a manual, put your car in first gear and pull up the parking brake. If you have an automatic, put your car in park and also pull up the parking brake. So our first big step is gonna be jacking up the car so we can get access to the oil. Find the K member under your car or in your owner's manual, it'll tell you exactly where you should jack it up. But for my car, it's the K member. I rolled my jack under and now I'm gonna pump it up. Find a sturdy spot under the car to put your jack stands. We use the subframe here because it's metal and it should support the car perfectly fine. Slide under the car and find where the oil drains from. It should look something like this and then it'll have a bolt right here. That's what we're gonna loosen and have the oil come out of. And then you'll also see in here, if I move over right there where it says K&N, that is the oil filter. That's what we're gonna be changing later. I got a ratchet and a 16 millimeter socket and that should fit perfectly on to the oil drain plug. You're gonna want to align this pan under uh, the oil so it goes right in there without spilling anywhere on the ground. I put this on here. I'm gonna try to loosen it a little bit. Just break it. It's pretty hard. Okay, there we loosen it a little bit, turn it a little bit more. Gotta be careful, this might be hot. Okay, starting to drip out a little bit. So I'm gonna use my hands right here. Try to get it out without spilling it. Perfect! Didn't spill shit anywhere. Right into the pan and barely even got my hands dirty. Looking good, boys. So we're gonna let this sit and drain as long as we possibly can. And once it stops leaking, then we're gonna cap it up and move on to the next step. Looks like it is pretty much done draining. So I'm gonna wipe it off and then I'll cap it off. So I hand tighten that, gonna wipe it off a little bit more to get off any remaining oil. And then we're gonna go back with the ratchet, switch it on to the tightening mode, and then tighten it up. Make sure you don't tighten it too tight. Once it's pretty much tightened, just wanna give it a little bit more, make sure it doesn't come off, but we don't wanna over tighten that. Next step is taking off the oil filter. First, you wanna check if it can be done by hand. Make sure you have the drain pan under the filter because when we take this off, there's gonna be some oil that comes out of it too. All I need to do is grab the oil filter with the oil filter wrench that I have. Since it was a little bit too tight, then I'm going to loosen it a little bit, squeeze and loosen until it's ready to be hand loosened. After loosening it a little bit with the oil filter wrench, I did the rest of the loosening with my hand and I let it drip out onto here and then I took it completely off. Unfortunately with my car, um, the oil filter is kind of in a bad spot and it drips oil on a lot of other components as it goes down. But I'm gonna wipe that off with a paper towel and then replace it. So if you have a car where you can put in the oil filter completely vertically, you're gonna wanna fill up this filter with your new oil before you put it in. That makes it so the car doesn't have to run dry on its first startup. But if you have a car like mine where the oil filter is like completely at the side or goes like this, you can't do that. So what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna take some of the new oil and you're gonna rub it on the top here. 
So I dipped my finger in here and then I lubed it up with some oil. That'll make it run better. I've seen a lot of Chris Fix videos and he always does that. So if you can't fill up your filter based on how it's placed in the car, make sure to rub some oil around here. And for the last step under the car, all I need to do is screw this on back in place. I'll show you guys right now. With this car, it's kind of a tight fit, but right there is where we need to screw it on. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get this on camera, but I need to get it through there and screw it on. I'll see you guys once it's on. So, so after a bit of struggling, I got it on and now I just need to keep hand tightening it. And this does not need to be too tight. As you can see here, I'm just hand tightening it, trying to get it as good as I can. <sighs> there we go. It's snug and then you should be good to move on to filling at the top. But if there's any oil remaining like there is here, make sure to wipe it off. I put the jack under, took out the jack stands, and now we're slowly gonna loosen it and let it come down. There we go. So after draining the oil, taking off the old filter, putting on the new filter, cleaning everything up down there, and lowering the car back to normal, we have about one step left, and it's definitely the easiest one. Look in your engine bay and find where your oil goes. It should usually have an oil symbol. Mine literally just says engine oil. So I will unscrew it. Find a funnel and put it inside because if you don't, it's gonna be really hard to get your oil in without spilling it. And you really don't wanna spill it all over your engine bay. Get your oil, make sure it's the right type and the right amount, and then start pouring it in. After all the oil's in, put the cap back on. Make sure you hear it click. It should be good now, and let's start up the car. Clutch is in, let's start it up, see if it works. So that right there is how to do an oil change all by yourself. It's gonna cost you about like 30 bucks to get all the materials for the oil chains. Yes, a jack and jack stands cost extra, but that's pretty much used in everything. But it's really quick, really easy, and I really hope you guys enjoyed this how-to video. I'm gonna do some more install videos in the future, and if you guys like this style of video, let me know in the comments. If you guys have any questions, leave them down in the comments too. And if I did anything wrong or explained anything wrong, please let me know, all right? Thank you everybody once again. New vlog should be coming within the next few days as well. But thank you guys, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.